Hello there and welcome to A2 Maths, we're on June 2019, paper 1, and here we're looking at question 5. So, let's get started in question 5. The first part is part A, which is to write f of x in the completed the square form. So, now let's get started on that one then. So, f of x equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 9. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factorise out that 2 from the first two terms. So x squared plus 2x. And I'll leave the plus 9 at the end. The next thing I'll do is I'll complete the square inside the bracket here. So it's going to be x plus 1 squared and then minus 1 on the outside. And then plus 9 on the proper outside of the brackets. Now let's expand the brackets. It's going to be 2 brackets x plus 1 squared minus 2 plus 9, so then it's going to be 2 brackets x plus 1 squared plus 7. So there we are, that's the answer for the completed the squared term. So here a is equal to 2, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to 7. Let's now move on to part B. We now need to sketch the curve of this, showing any points of intersection on the axes and coordinates of any turning points. So, let's draw the graph. And it's going to have a minimum point at minus 1, 7. So, minus 1, 7 will be its minimum point. And then it's going to be an x squared graph like this. It's going to cross the y-axis. It's going to cross the y-axis just at this number at the end here, at the number 9. Um, and the 2 doesn't really get involved in the minimum points, but it is going to make the graph uh, more, more steep than it would if the 2 wasn't there. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer for these two parts here. Let's now move on to part C. CI says describe fully the transformation that maps the curve with the equation y equals f of x. Let's just write out f of x again. It was 2 brackets x plus 1 squared plus 7 um, onto the curve where we have 2 brackets x minus 2 squared plus 4x minus 3. Okay, well, mm, it's not really much we can do with that apart from just expand all the brackets and then put it back into complete the square form. So it's going to be 2 brackets x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 4x minus 3. Let's now expand those brackets. 2x squared minus 8x plus 8 plus 4x minus 3. Let's now simplify what we've got there. 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. Let's now complete the square on this. 2 brackets x squared minus 2x plus 5. Let's now complete the square on that. x minus 1 squared and then minus 1 plus 5, let's expand the brackets, 2 brackets, x minus 1 squared, and then it would be minus 2 plus the 5, that would be plus 3. So, describe fully the transformation, so the transformation um, that maps the curve f of x onto the curve g of x, so if we're going from f of x to g of x, then this is going to be translate, right to and down 4. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer for part i. We can tell that because um, this, this g of x graph here will look like this thing here where it has a minimum point at 1, 3 and the f of x function looks like this thing here where it had minimum points minus 1, 7, and it's going to be exactly the same shape of the graph because it's got a 2 at the front of both of them, so it's just going to be translate right by 2, down by 4. So there we are. And moving on to CII, let's just remind ourselves of the f of x function. f of x was 2 brackets x plus 1 squared plus 7. State the range of the function h of x. 
Okay, that's a very good question. So how are we going to work out the range of this function given that our f of x function is on the bottom? So what we can say is that the range of f of x is y is bigger than or equal to 7. So what we now know is that the denominator for h of x is greater than or equal to 7. So what we now know is that it's going to be a um, h of x is going to be 21 over something bigger or equal to 7. Now, when it's 7 exactly, it's going to be 21 divided by 7 is 3. So it's going to be um, 3. Uh, so then when, and then when the denominator increases, the total value for h is going to go smaller. So let's say it now goes up to, um, the value of this denominator goes up to 21. It's now going to be 21 over 21, which would be 1. So it's going to be 3 or smaller down to 0. So therefore, the range of h of x is going to be, whoops, it's going to be in between 0 to 3 including 3 because this uh, range could equal 7 there so it could be 3 exactly and then as this denominator gets bigger um, as, as this denominator here gets bigger then the whole fraction will be tending towards 0 so there we are so that's the range of the function h of x and that's 10 marks there for question 5 not too bad that one lovely so there we are that's the answer let's now go on to question 6